have our sound system here with us today, but uh, if it's too loud, it's not my fault, it's Micah's fault, so. <laughs> Actually, Micah's not back there. It's not your fault. I said it. I wanted to blame you, though. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, it's good to, be, uh, good to be in God's house. It's good to be back in uh, Lancaster. We love it here. This is uh, really one of the highlights of our year to be able to be here. To be able to come twice a year is even more special for us, so we sure, certainly appreciate the accommodations and the opportunity to be able to park our trailer and uh, showers and bathrooms and all that kind of thing. Y'all are so good to us, and we certainly appreciate that. Um, I was thinking about Old Fashioned Sunday, and uh, as I was thinking about that, I was reminded this week, we had told my dad that we were going to have Old Fashioned Sunday today. And uh, my dad thought he was old-fashioned enough, so if he just walked in, uh, it would be enough. He didn't need to dress up. So, uh, But I was thinking about that as I was getting ready to prepare some songs and things like that. Um, I'm thankful to be a part of an old-fashioned group of believers. Amen. And um, it means a lot to me. The older I get, the more I, I tend to think I'm becoming a dinosaur. <laughs> because of the way we believe and the things that we stand for. That's right. Um, but you know what? I'd rather become a, a dinosaur than to be like the world. That's, and, uh, that's not bragging. That's just because I'm glad that the Lord saved my soul and changed our lives and, and hoping to thank the Lord he's put us on the right path and we want to stay there. So we're going to sing a few songs uh, here this morning and, and let uh, Micah share some things here. Looking forward to that. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing.
I hardly ever get this frog in my throat, but it's there today, so who knows what's going to come out, maybe some croaking or something. <laughs> when Jesus said that he would die on the three days rise, so even though they heard, truly were surprised. Oh, 
I'll do one more and we'll go to hear from Michael here. This one's one we, uh, I think we sang on in May somewhere here. Probably the first time we sang it here.
Psalm 133 this morning, Psalm 133. He has a water bottle holder on his stand. Do you know how cool that is? <laughs> Psalm 133, excuse me. Thank you all. That was wonderful singing, wonderful playing. Really, really good singing. Really, really good playing. I was trying to be mature, but they started playing a couple of solos, and I was like a little kid watching the bluegrass song. It was really good playing, really good singing. I appreciate that. Amen. Psalm 133 this morning. Um, I'm just thankful for God for blessing our church. Amen. Um, but one thing I appreciate is the spirit of unity that we have. And Psalm 133 is one of those psalms I read this the other day. Um, I had skipped psalms when I was reading through it, and I was like, I'll just read the psalm each day. Well, then I didn't. So after I got through one book of the Bible, I went back and read through the psalms. And this is one that I read, and I was like, this sounds super good and super important, but I'm not quite sure what it means. But it illustrates what unity is like in the church. As we look at Psalm 133, this is one of the songs of degrees. Um, they tell us it's probably when they would go on a pilgrimage for one of the feasts. They would walk up the 15 stairs to the temple, and they would sing one of these on each of the stairs. And this is what they would sing going up. But David is writing a song of degrees of David. David is writing this, and it says in Psalm 133, just three verses, it says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Let's pray. Lord, as we come in your presence, God, thank you so much for this morning. Just for the good singing, the good time of fellowship beforehand, just um, for blessing our church for all these years. Thank you for that, Lord. I just thank you for your faithfulness. Help us to be faithful to you. Pray you speak to us through this now, Lord, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. David says, God says through King David, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. You know, one reason I think God has blessed our church is that everything pastors try to do, and in turn, everything we try to do, is for God. We're united with the same goal to reach, the, get, get the world out with the Great Commission, get the gospel out to the world, just to serve God as He would see fit. And if we all look towards God, we see that we can have a spirit of unity. And that's something David out says is so important in our church. And if we want to see the ongoing unity, God gives us some advice here to make sure we're focusing on Him. But He says in verse 1 Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Behold, when God's people are united, it demands attention, right? we got to focus on that. Um, if we're going to dwell together, stay together, not just have like a five minutes together that we get along, but if we're going to keep going another 48 years, how have we kept going the last 48 years? We dwell together, we stay together in unity. Amen. And God says it's good and it's pleasant. Good is complete or sufficiently perfect in its kind. Pleasant is pleasing and agreeable, grateful to the mind or to the senses. You know, there's some things that are good but not pleasant, and some things that are pleasant but not good. If you forget to set your alarm clock in the morning and you sleep all day, that's pleasant. You slept all day, you feel good when you wake up. But it's not good because then you're late for work and you're running behind. It's not going good. But then there's some things that are good for you, like vegetables, that really aren't that pleasant, right? But it says unity is good and pleasant. And if we want to keep going on for the next 48 years, God says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. And then we get to this part, and I was like, that's a great verse. And I read this next verse that day, and I was like, I don't have a clue what this is talking about. It says, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard. Even Aaron's beard, the beard, or even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments, the bottom of his um, priestly outfit, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forever. Now, when I read that, I was like, I don't have a clue what that means. But if you notice, the ointment, it says, talking about the ointment, in Exodus, God prepared the tabernacle, he prepared the priesthood, and he said that there was going to be a certain ointment that they would pour on his head that, the, that would run down upon him. It was, a set, it was a consecrating ointment. He set them apart as the priests. No one else could get this mixture together. No one else could use this just as perfume in their house. This is something that was just for the priests to set them apart. But when they would pour it upon the head, it would run down upon the body. I was thinking, I know when um, my mom sometimes would get a coupon for Christmas and she'd get us a set of Axe body wash um, and hair or, um, conditioner and stuff. And I love using Axe stuff, like body wash and stuff, because it just smells good forever. Now, if you use too much of it, it does not. But that ointment, it would start at the top and it would just run down and you could smell it. It was setting them apart as the priests. 
but it started at the top and worked its way down. It says in verse 3, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forever. They tell us that the Mount Hermon, um, Mount Hermon was a mount full of snow, and when the snow would melt, it would bring the dew down upon the mountain, and it would water all the areas around it, because the snow started at the top and worked its way down. It started at the top and worked its way down, it would melt the water, the water would water everywhere, and it says, upon even as the dew upon the mountains of Zion. It says Zion, right outside of Jerusalem, was not known to have snow, was not known to water everywhere. But all the blessings of Zion were from the Lord. It says, there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. See, if we're going to have unity, it's going to be like the ointment that sets us apart. It's going to be as the dew that refreshes us. But it's going to have to start at the top. It's going to have to come from God. Amen. See, if we as a church are going to continue in this unity for the next 48 years, we just got to keep looking to God, keep Amen. looking at what he wants us to do. And it's not what I think is best. It's not what you think is best. It's not what any of us think is best. It's what God's word says is best. And we just keep looking to him. And if we'll all have that goal of God, I want to do what you want us to do today, what you want us to do for the next 48 years. If we'll look to God, he will bless us with that spirit of unity that will set us apart for his purpose for working in Lancaster and around the world and the surrounding areas. Wherever God wants us to go, we can take the gospel to them, but we'll focus on him. And that spirit of unity can run down as that ointment started at the head and ran all the way down to Aaron and it's consecrated him. Or as the dew that started in the mountain, our unity is going to have to come from God and just work its way down through us, through our church, through the next generations. But to do that, it's not something we can just work in if we all do this and this and this. It's something that we got to work at what God wants us to do. His word is our only guide. And if we'll be united to do what he wants us to do according to his word, his plan, not the unity that everybody talks about. You do what I, what you think is right, I'll do what I think is right. But if we'll just get in God's word and what he thinks is right, and we'll say, God, we want to do what you want us to do and let him guide us, he can start that spirit of unity. But it's going to have to start at the top. As the ointment ran down the head all the way down the body, as the dew ran down the mountains and watered all the areas around us, the unity is such a great blessing, but it's going to have to start with God, and it's going to have to come down and bless each of us by God's grace. You guys could sing again. I'm sorry, that was way shorter than I thought it was going to be. We can sing one if you want. Yeah, you guys want to sing one more. I'm sorry, that was short. But let's just keep our eyes on God. Amen. And if we'll keep our focus on Him, we can be unified the next 48 years through God's blessing, not through our ideas, but through God's blessing. give me a chance to use my little violin so I, I uh actually i brought it i'm like oh i'm gonna use it and then we don't have any songs ready for it but we'll sing this one so. uh, it's kind of a big instrument to take if you're not gonna use it <laughs> you pray for us because aj supposed i need to get aj to play this thing so aj has to be willing to play it right <laughs>
<laughs> I'm like a, a kid in a candy store when it comes to uh, musical instruments. So if anybody can can uh, can pray that I can figure out how to play two instruments at one time, I'd love to play the bass and the guitar at the same time. That'd be awesome. So you let me know how I can hold this thing and a guitar. And uh, you pray about that, maybe God will give me another arm or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not saying harmonica. I like the harmonica, but I just don't really like that. <laughs> you pray for me. I'm like my dad a little bit. I'd like a little kid in a candy store. So. <laughs> anyway, it's just fun. So. All right. Thank you all for just the 15 minutes. You all just missed. Yeah. Nice.